Let's see what it takes to make the tough decisions being a referee, specifically rugby today, with my favourite South African referee. He's the only referee I know from South Africa, but here's Rasta. Oh, and I'm not pronouncing the last name because I will probably get it wrong. Nelson Mandela once said that sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. It speaks to the youth in a language that they understand. Sport can create hope where there was once despair. When you think of that, it's actually pretty accurate considering what is sport? Sport, how does sport create such unity, such divide, such power, etc., etc.? It's incredible to think, you know, a, a sport can do so much when it's just a game at the end of the day. It's Sitting here in Newlands Rugby Stadium, watching the opening ceremony of the Rugby World Cup in 1995. I was a young 11 year old kid ready and eager to watch the Springboks take on the world. And whoa, were they- Oh, and if you're watching this before the uh, the Lions tour, Springboks, get ready. Because the Lions are coming to eat you. Yeah, that might sound a bit stupid, but I'm looking forward to the, uh, the Lions tour. There's some tough decisions being made which will change the course of South Africa forever. Today we're back with another episode of Coffee with Craig, where I sit down with a good friend, Rasta, one of the top referees that we have in rugby in South Africa. See, even Craig doesn't know how to pronounce Rasta's last name. So, you, you know, if you think, whoa, Rob, you should have, you should have uh, at least attempted it. Look, not even Craig, and apparently Craig is his mate, so. And we talk about making tough decisions, making decisions under pressure. So if you haven't made the decision to hit subscribe, hit subscribe quickly and carry on yeah. watching because Coffee with Craig is all about inspiration, motivation and making everyone's lives better. So I hope you enjoy Newlands Rugby Stadium. Rasta, thanks so much for joining us on Coffee with Craig. It's great to, great to chat to you here at the, the home of rugby. Now, bear in mind, I'm not a proper rugby fan. I am learning about it still. Uh, yeah, England fans might disagree with that comment about the home of rugby. Just, just, uh, yeah. Feel free to let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on that. So I want to, I want to talk to you about making some very difficult decisions because I know that's what your job's all about, making tough decisions when you're under pressure. But I want to lead into that. So I mean, do you want to tell us how did you get into becoming a referee? Yeah, Craig, firstly, thank you. It's great to be part of this uh, coffee show. I started obviously uh, refereeing schoolboy rugby when I was obviously a student. Uh, and then I took a massive liking into it uh, as I was small in stature. This is what I like about uh, Rasta is the fact that he's not a big person. He's not a tall person. He doesn't really look like he commands any authority if that's the polite way of putting it. And that's not no disrespect to him at all. But from what I've seen from clips and, and whatnot, he's still getting the respect. Now, obviously, that comes from the rugby culture as well. Um, but it just shows that you don't have to be a giant among men to be commanding respect. Um, Did you want to actually be a rugby player? Yes, I wanted to be a springbok. But... Uh, of course, no one grows up wanting to be a referee, surely. You know, I'm not a referee because I grew up wanting to be a referee. I grew up wanting to be a professional football player. Soccer, if you're from one of those areas of the world. You don't grow up wanting to be a footballer, uh, to be a football referee or a rugby referee. Come on. But, uh, obviously, I was just not big enough. <laughs> and then um, as I was studying, I refereed a lot of games and coaching uh, and did a bit of analysis and then um, loved uh, refereeing and took up the whistle and everything worked out well. And it all worked out. Yeah, yeah, everything worked out well. I got onto the seventh circuit uh, and then after that... Uh... I love watching him uh, when he referees sevens because sevens seems to have some really fast players, like really fast. 
and Rasta keeps up with them without breaking a sweat. It's a brilliant to see see the referee in line with the player as he scores a try. Uh, I had a lot of uh, lucky breakthroughs, which was awesome. Well, t well, tell us about that. So, I mean, you are one of the best referees in South Africa. If not, I mean, are you rated as the best referee? <laughs> I mean, you've 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 done the you've been to the Olympics, you've been to the Commonwealth Games, you've done sevens rugby, and you're now doing fifteen man rugby. Yes, I've, uh, Craig, I've been very fortunate uh, to get a lot of opportunities on the Seven Circuit, doing a couple of finals, uh, Olympics, two World Cup finals Humble. as well on the Seven Circuit. But uh, in during the 15s, I've had the opportunity to referee a Curry Cup final in 2015, which was great. Uh, but I'm just trying to find my feet still, so I, I wouldn't say I'm the best, but uh, I'm learning at the moment and really enjoying the journey. So, I mean, you, you made a name for yourself in, in Sevens Rugby. Why, why did you want to move across to 15 man? Uh, well, I'd done uh, sevens uh, probably for, I think, seven or eight years, and it was time for me to graduate to the next level. Uh, when we do the sport, obviously, our main objective is to uh, graduate every time and get to the highest level. And my dreams, obviously, is to do tier one tests, you know, pro hopefully uh, New Zealand, England at Twickenham or Australia, uh, New Zealand at, uh, in Auckland or something. So we we strive to get to the next level the whole time. It's an interesting point he makes actually because at the end of the day, if I can relate it to football, I really need a separate enclosed office so that the dog cannot make little taps on the floor. Anyway, um, if I can relate it to football, you would almost say sevens is like five aside. Well, Referees, it, it, and it might be slightly different, please don't get me wrong, but a referee doesn't, the, five aside is not the top level. You know, if you want to be serious in a sport, you want to be at the top level, you know, and that is 11 aside. For rugby, it's 15s. Um, you don't aim to be second place. So if you want to, at the end of the day, no one, you know, most people think of the Rugby World Cup. Um, if you think of rugby as the top tournament, you don't you don't referee in that if you do the sevens. So you need to be up at that top level. Uh, I don't. I, I I hope in that analogy of, of five aside football and rugby sevens is similar. Um, I think it is. Yeah, you wouldn't set if if you're serious, you wouldn't settle for doing five aside football. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we are motivated to keep refereeing and getting to the top level. Okay, what do you do about getting better? How do you become better as a referee? So we obviously, we watch rugby mm -hmm. and probably the person we hate the most on the field is the, the ref. Because <laughs> when, when he's blowing against your team, uh, it's he, always his fault. Yes, Craig. So what happens during the week, I'll break it down for you so you can actually understand what happens during the week. We do a lot of analysis. Uh, there's a lot of communication with the coaches. Uh, with our own individual coaches, with the team coaches. Um, we work with our director of rugby, which is Rassi Rasmus as well. Uh, we've got Mark Lawrence as well, who is our high performance manager. So there's a whole structure to it, uh, where we obviously have to do our homework during the week in order to be prepared for the weekend or prepared for tournaments. Okay. Um, and obviously we'll do a post review and a reflection, and then we actually identify uh, areas we could have done better Okay. Because in every game, you're always going to get uh, errors and non-decisions. Mm. And our main objective is to cut down the error rate and the non-decision rate. Okay, so, t so tell me about that. So that's interesting. Well, I say it's interesting. It, I think it's similar with football, soccer, in that it's a top-level thing. At the lower levels, you don't get replays. You don't get proper coaches. You don't, you know, you don't get any of that. You don't, you're not able to an an analyse. Um, it's the top level, and it's the same here. He talks about he talks about um, during the week you're preparing for the weekend and obviously at lower levels it's different you work during the week you know it, and then it's it's two random teams quite often at the lower levels so you don't it's you don't need to worry too much and I like to think well to be properly neutral in a game I don't even want to know where the two teams are in the league for example you know say it's a first versus second you know they are, both teams are going to be wanting to win desperately because they're wanting to win the league but i don't want to know that because 
I want to be going into the game not expecting anything and then being able to adapt my game if something does happen, but I'm always at a neutral state. I'm trying to stay calm. I don't want the occasion to overtake my emotions, if that makes sense. So I'm a, I'm a hockey player, so it's a little bit different to what you're used to, but I know what it's like when you're playing and you, you make a mistake. You might miss a pass or you pass to the opposition and you start to almost spiral downwards and you realize that you're making mistakes. Now for you as a, a ref, that pressure is huge. And you're in a stadium like this where there's 50,000 people watching you. How do you, how do you stop that negative spiral? Um, he makes a good point actually. Well done Craig. Um, I'm gonna relate it back to football, but I will also relate it to rugby. So you have, say in football, you have 22 men. Uh, in, in rugby, you have 30. Now in football, if a striker misses a shot, no big deal, they get another one. Um, if, if um, you know a defender misses a tackle, that happens. In rugby, if a pl player misses a pass or drops a ball, it happens. As soon as the referee gets one decision possibly wrong, all hell breaks loose. So why is it such a difference? You know, at the end of the day, the players are being paid to do their job and they mess up. A referee does their job and sometimes they mess up. What's the difference? As people know, rugby is a very dynamic game and um, we've got uh, a lot of tools that we set up obviously during the week or for the season. Uh, we've got psychologists, uh, we've got coaches and trainers. Uh, and what's very important is that you set up those triggers. Uh, once we have those triggers, uh, it's very important that uh, you're able to reset uh, once you've identified that uh, you could have possibly made an error. Uh, and there's different instances where that happens. You could uh, officiate a breakdown and think you got the penalty right. Uh, and as you look up on the big screen, um, and obviously you might pick up that it's the wrong decision. Uh, and that's where your triggers come in, where you then uh, need to reset uh, and get back uh, to your accuracy levels, whether it's the next breakdown, the next scrum, the next lineup. So, What a fantastic point. Rasta, I like you, man. Now, he makes a brilliant point, and something I was told, so when we get um, appointed some cup finals uh, in football, we have to go to a special kind of evening, and they quite often have a, a speaker come in and speak to all the referees last, not last year, the year before, i.e. before the global bastard happened, um, a speaker came in and said, at the end of the day, it, it's, you're, mentally, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be thinking about what you just did right. You should be thinking about making sure your next thing is right. So that means, okay, you did something right, brilliant. But then, Two minutes down the line, if you get something wrong, it's not so great. It's exactly the same then. If, if you get something wrong, so be it. It happens. Make sure you get the next one right. Um, so like, like Rasta's saying, you almost need to have that mentality that you're able to reset, go neutral again, um, and almost start afresh. Because <sighs> there's no point of dwelling on something you got right and no point of dwelling on something you got wrong because your emotions then take over and your decisions can sometimes be hampered, especially if you get the wrong decisions. Reset, forget about it, it happened, you're a human. You know, forget, reset, go again. So, uh, we are equipped and trained with uh, different tools uh, and that's the beauty of our game because it's so dynamic. Uh, we're gonna get errors, uh, non-decisions in the game but our main focus is to minimize the errors and those non-decisions uh, while we officiate the game. Okay, well, talking about resets, let's, let's reset now. So Rasta, I know what it's like. I mean, we've all, made, we've all made decisions in our life and we've made bad decisions or the wrong decision. Do you want to tell us what is, I mean, what is some of the, the worst rugby decisions that you've made on the field? Yeah, Craig, I mean, uh, you know, we always don't get it right. Sometimes we make mistakes and that's the nature of the game. Um, I mean, if I have to uh, recall one of the mistakes I've done, it probably uh, was uh, a game uh, somewhere overseas where, you know, you had two teams playing uh, on the seventh circuit and I didn't quite get the decision uh, right. Um, and, you know, it had material effect 
uh, on the outcome of the game. Mm. Uh, and it's probably one of the things I reflect back on as my learning point, you know, and it made me a stronger referee as I'm still growing and learning. So what, what happened? Uh, it was probably... Before I find out what happened, I put this I put this towards people that say the referee ruined the game or, or one decision ruined the game. One decision does not ru ru ruin a game when it is a game of, say, 80 minutes, 90 minutes. Now, in football, if a referee gives a penalty that is wrong, possibly, the referee hasn't ruined the game. At the end of the day, it's a game of 90 minutes of football. You're telling me your team didn't have any other chances to score goals? Now, I understand what people are saying. I, I honestly do, because, you know, if you're 1-0 down, and that means you've got to score two goals. Um, but I don't like the when people say the referee ruined a game because he made the wrong decision i don't like that what happened to the the you know the 89 other minutes of the game or in rugby the other 79 minutes in the game just a mentality i, I think i've got because referee referees get the blame for more or less everything probably a breakdown i got wrong okay. um and it had material effect and there were points scored after that um, you know, it was the last um, decision of the game that changed the outcome of the game. Uh, and it was a good learning for me. So it's like a mental visualization that you have? Yes, yes, because rugby is about pictures, if you think about it. Um, if, if you have a photographic memory, you can always reflect back on what happened. And, you know, when it happens again, uh, you know exactly what to do. So um, it's sort of like having a photographic memory. Okay, all right. So I mean, so, so tell us a little bit more about that. Do you do you ever come down here and watch a team practice, and then you try and figure out what decisions you'd make while they're busy practicing? That sounds stupid. Why would you do that? I'll give you one example for football in a minute, of of not while they're training, but I'll give you an example. So Craig, if I tell you the best tool in in uh, our sport of rugby, whether it's hockey, rugby, uh, or any team sport. You know, the more you go out there and you educate yourself, uh, the better you are when it comes to uh, game day. Mm. Uh, so all of us uh, have, have been afforded the opportunities to visit our franchises wherever we live and work with the teams. Uh, they might be having a contact session or scrum session. Uh, you get uh, scrum coaches. And it's really good to just go out during the week uh, and learn a bit more so that you, you're better prepared for your weekend. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, the story I was going to say, um, now, one good thing that I've, I learned from football, from one of the mentors or one of the assessors who was assessing the middle guy while I was a lino, was when teams are warming up before a football match, the goalkeepers normally practice their goal kicks, uh, normally the goal kicks from the ground. Now... Some referees, when they warm up, they ref they warm up in the corner or they run all the way around the pitch. Um, but I found that one of the best places to warm up is across the middle of the pitch. Now, that's because uh, what you can then do is when the goalkeepers, both goalkeepers normally do it, they're practicing their goal kicks and you can see how good their goal kicks are, um, the sort of directions they kick it and how they kick it. And that is one of the, one of the best things I learned uh, for how how and where to stand at goal kicks. By that little pre-match um, warming up, you can see how the goalies are kicking it. And positionally, it works amazingly because sometimes a goalkeeper is absolutely useless at kicking. So you have to change your position. And if you know that before the game starts, you can... You know, you can implement it right from the start. Whereas if you if you don't know that and you find the goalkeeper's got a dreadful kick or even a really good kick, then you might find yourself out of position for the first however long in the match. And therefore something could happen where you're out of position. So it's not necessarily talking about in the week, but it's kind of pre-match when the teams are warming up, something that you can learn. Um, little bits that... These are things that assessors and more experienced referees pass down and, and knowledge is shared. So you've been very fortunate with your career as a, as a referee. I mean, you've been to the Olympics, which is the pinnacle of sport. Um, but I mean, what does the future hold? 
Where, who is where Rasta in five, ten years time? So Craig, what I am busy working on, obviously is my 15s game at the moment. Uh, and obviously with the dynamics with COVID, uh, the whole world is resetting. Mm. Uh, and I think it's great for all, all of us to reset. And the sport is just going to evolve. Okay. So as the competitions go on, uh, my goals, my own personal goals, obviously well, is to get to the highest level of Test rugby. And uh, at the same time, you know, uh, gain a lot of experience. So, I mean, is it a goal of yours to, to be in the, the 50 man World Cup? Yes, it's absolutely. I want to be at the World Cup, hopefully. Uh, maybe if, if I'm fit enough and still strong enough and still young enough, uh, I also want to be part of the British Irish Lions. Uh, Amazing. After our British Irish Lions. So, um, I definitely think he will. Yeah, be. that's the pinnacle of sport. Come um, July. And I'm looking forward to. Working hard for the next couple of uh, months and years uh, to get to the highest level uh, while I gain a lot of experience. That's amazing. Rasta, thank you so much for joining us on Coffee with Craig. I really appreciate you taking out the time to be here to share your story and the tough decisions that you've had to make with, with our audience. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Craig, I would like to say thanks for the opportunity to, to converse. Uh, All right, we'll leave it there. Um, he seems such a decent bloke. He really does seem such a decent bloke and a nice example of a referee. Some interesting points brought up. Hopefully you enjoyed my sort of footballing side of things, trying to link it together. Um, and from my experience, uh, if you did enjoy it, like and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time. <laughs>